Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. Today we're going to be chatting about PR. Specifically, I'm going to be sharing five products that I would repurchase that are received in PR and then five that I would not. So I have filmed a video like this before. It was a very long time ago, but I actually got re-inspired to film something like this again when I saw the collab between Hannah and Samantha. They shared products they would and would not buy again that they received in PR. So I will leave both of theirs linked down below since they filmed those pretty recently. I'm really excited to share this with you guys. I feel like there are a lot of products that I have fallen in love with that I discovered because I received them in PR. And there are a lot of times things that I wouldn't have thought to purchase for myself. There might be a product that I might not think I have interest in or I might not think would suit my needs and my lifestyle, but because I received it in PR and I received it to test out, I realized that I actually do love it. And that's part of the reason that it is nice to receive products in PR. Keep in mind, I'm a very small YouTuber. I don't receive a ton of PR, but I do feel like I have enough to film a video like this. Also, the ones that... I don't love and I wouldn't repurchase. I can name like a bunch of things from each of these brands that I love and would repurchase. So just remember, not everything's gonna work for everyone, but let's go ahead and hop into it. Also, don't I look so fall today? It's the middle of summer, but for some reason I wanted to do this very fall look, probably because I have the subculture palette in my shot my stash right now and it's just very like grungy fall. So we just went very grungy today. Should we start off with the ones I wouldn't repurchase or the ones that I would? Or go back and forth? Huh. Let's start off with the ones that I would repurchase. Now I'm gonna be honest, I feel like the ones that I would repurchase, you guys are gonna be like, okay, yeah, I could see that. You'd like those products, you talk about them a lot. But the ones I wouldn't, a lot of them are things I haven't talked about too, too much. But let's start off with the ones I would repurchase. First of all, I try to be a little bit picky with this because I feel like there are a lot of products that I've received in PR that you guys already know I love. Like, if I was sitting on here talking about the Persona lip glosses and the Koki Be Bright concealer, you guys would be like, I know, we know, we know you like those. But I try to stick with some things that I don't talk about as frequently, but a lot of these, if you watch this channel, you might be familiar. So I'm actually gonna start off with a skincare item. This is from First Aid Beauty. It is their Retinol Eye Cream. You guys, this does wonders, wonders, does wonders for my under eyes because this is so effective at depuffing my under eyes. I use it once a day with some other eye creams. I'll use them twice a day, but this is pretty intense, so I try to reserve it for only one time per day. Keep in mind it has retinol in it. It can be a little bit intense. It might be something that you want to slowly introduce into your routine if you do decide to use it. And honestly, this is just a little guy. It's half an ounce of product. It's about $42, so it's pricier than some other eye creams that I like. But this I have found to be so effective on my under eyes. I feel like a lot of eye creams will just help with puffiness and they'll kind of soothe the under eyes and depuff a little bit, but this, if I apply this the night before, I won't have any puffing in the morning and I feel like the darkness on my under eyes is so much less intense when I'm using this product significantly, or not significantly, consistently. Love this, would repurchase it. Next are these Koki lip liners, you guys. These are so great. So you saw me in Monday's video wearing a bold fuchsia lip and I was wearing this color right here. This is bright fuchsia from Koki. So these just glide right on. They're retractable so you don't have to worry about sharpening them. My other favorite is nude. This is probably my most worn but I also like warm nude. I honestly like all of these. They're so creamy, they're long wearing, they glide across the lips. I would say this formula is most reminiscent of the NYX lip liners. Very, very similar. I think I like these a little bit more than the NYX lip liners though, just because I find them even creamier, whereas the NYX ones, I don't wanna say they're dry because they're not, but these are just like ever so slightly creamier. They last, they're beautiful, and they have a ton of colors, you guys. Nothing like orange and corally, but like your neutral colors, some of your berry tones, like they will have a lip liner for you. Next might be a little bit expected, but you know I love the Born This Way foundation. I actually was so late to the party on this because I feel like the hype about this really built a few years ago and I hadn't tried it until maybe a year ago. They sent this to me in PR and I'm like, wow, why was I sleeping on this foundation for so long? This is my second favorite foundation in my collection behind my Too Faced Peach Perfect. So both from Too Faced, but I bought Peach Perfect and they sent me this one. And this, 
Honestly, I've said before, it's a foundation that I would recommend for just about anyone. When I did my friend's makeup for her wedding recently, this was the foundation that she wore. It works if you have dry skin, it works if you have oily skin, it can be manipulated, it's long wearing, it's natural, you can build it to full coverage, you can keep it more medium. It's just, it makes sense that this has been such a holy grail for so many people, that this is such a cult favorite, iconic product. I get it, I would repurchase it, and I highly recommend it. Next is my Sigma Wicked Gel Liner. So they do have multiple colors, but this is the one that I wear. It's in the shade Wicked, it's black. I'm wearing it today. And the reason that I love this so much, and if you guys watched my 20 best from 20 brands video, this I said was my favorite from Sigma. The reason that I love this so much is because this makes creating a wing so simple. And before I discovered this product, I really struggled to wing out my liner, to do my liner in a way that I I felt was even, was flattering, and this just made it so easy for me. I've said before, it's not waterproof, it's not gonna, it's not totally smear proof or anything like that, but it glides on so well if you're using a really nice, precise eyeliner pencil. This is such a great product, and mine that I had before actually started to dry up, and I'm so lucky that they heard me mention that in a video and they sent me some more of these and i would totally repurchase them if i go through the ones that i have i don't even know how i could if we're being honest because there's so much product in here but if it dries out again i don't have a backup i would definitely repurchase it with my own money this is a fantastic eyeliner for the most part i prefer like gel liners like this and this is my number one and finally i would definitely buy more of these from Physicians Formula, I was gonna say First Aid Beauty, from Physicians Formula. These are their Healthy Lip Liquid Lipsticks. This is one of my favorite liquid lipstick formulas. The three, the, are basically the only three that I like are these, the Ofra ones, I'm wearing Ofra Lasso Last today, and then the Persona Lip Lipsticks. These are just very moussey and comfortable on the lips. One of my all-time favorites is this one right here, Tulip Treatment, which is like a coral, almost like a neon red color, and then this is my other favorite, and I know a lot of people love this as well. If you are on my skin tone and you're looking for a perfect nude, this is the shade All Natural Nude, and it's just one of those wear with everything colors. If I don't know what I wanna go with, this is always a safe bet. This formula is comfortable, creamy. It's not transfer proof, but it doesn't transfer as much as like a cream bullet lipstick would. All right, now that you've heard some things that I would repurchase, let's talk about a few that I would not. So first of all, I love Sol de Janeiro and I would repurchase the Boom Boom Cream, but I would not repurchase the Coco Cabana Cream. Now, I don't think this is the worst product I've tried and I do enjoy it. It's extremely hydrating, but it's a very different formula than the Boom Boom Cream. It's a lot more gel-like, so I find it to be pretty sticky, Whereas with the Boom Boom Cream, it's more of a cream and it really melts into the skin and absorbs into the skin quite fast. But this one, I feel like if I put this on, I can't even put this on during the day. Like I have to put it on before bed and it can't be like right before bed because then I stick to my sheets. Like I have to think this through. I'm like, mm, can I apply this right now? Because if I put it on during the day, I'm just so sticky. And the scent of this, I don't like as much as the Boom Boom Cream. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice scent. It, f at the first time I smelt it, I was like, okay, this actually is pretty good. It smells like a pina colada. But the more that you wear this, it starts to smell like buttered popcorn, and I've heard other people describe it as that, and I just think that's the perfect description for it. It just smells like very buttery movie theater popcorn as it's sitting on your body, and honestly, I would save your money on this and go with the Boom Boom Cream. They're both pricey, but the Boom Boom Cream is more worth it in my eyes, this is definitely not. All right, so I said that I would repurchase the Sigma liner, but I would not repurchase their liquid lipsticks. I have had two of them. I did declutter the shade Venom, which was a red from their holiday collection. This is the shade Anti-Venom, and I keep this because I love the shade. It's kind of similar to the one that I just showed you from Physicians Formula, but it's a little bit more pink. It's slightly lighter, more like milky. This formula is not the worst liquid lipstick formula I've ever tried. Let me start with that. But it definitely is an... It feels like one of the original liquid lipsticks. You know what I mean? Like back in 2015, we'll say, when liquid lipsticks were first coming out and we didn't have a lot to compare them to and we were wearing very thick 
drying liquid lipsticks, this to me kind of falls in that category, whereas some of the newer formulas like the Persona ones are a lot thinner, are a lot more comfortable on the lips, and this I just find to be too heavy. It makes my lips feel so dried out, like uh, stiff even, and I would not recommend the formula even though this color is really pretty. Speaking of drying lipsticks, Again, these are not the worst, but I did not think that they were worthy of repurchasing. Especially at $14, that's not a high-end price tag, but you, you gotta be pretty good formula to repurchase at that price tag. So these are the NCLA lipsticks. So I have the shades Pasadena Roses and Hidden Hills Hottie. Both really pretty colors. Pasadena Roses reminds me so much of Backshock from Urban Decay, which is like their iconic color. And then uh, Hidden Hills Hottie is a really pretty peach shade. Let me swatch it down there. Now, these are not the worst lipsticks I've ever tried, okay? But they're a little bit thick for a bullet lipstick. I don't wanna say thick, but I feel like they apply kind of heavy on the lips and they're a little bit drying. I don't think they look as natural and seamless and I don't feel like they melt into the lips the way other lipsticks do and I know oh, I don't know how that description melt into the lips but I guess what I mean by that is other lipsticks I'll apply they'll kind of just become one with my lips they'll move with my lips they sit neatly on the lips but these just kind of sit on top you can definitely tell that I'm wearing lipstick they're just a little heavy and slightly drying and it kind of bumps me out because I do like these shades and I love NCLA nail polishes. They have probably the best nail polish formula I've ever tried, so I would repurchase those, but not these. All right, Bite Beauty is kind of sticking with lip products. This is their Agave Weekly Lip Scrub. So let me start off by saying I don't necessarily believe in lip scrubs. I don't really use them. I feel like I can do a better job of exfoliating my lips just by taking a washcloth and kind of running it over them. But this, I know a lot of people actually really like this. So maybe part of that could fall into my preference of just not feeling like lip scrubs are necessary. But again, I feel like some of the pieces in this, did you guys hear that? I don't know what that sound is because that has been happening all day. I think it's our sound bar on the TV, but it just keeps doing that. Like, bloop, 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 and I don't know what that sound is coming from. But anyways, I almost find that the granules are not fine enough for me to exfoliate my lips. And I feel like even afterwards, I still just want to run over them with a washcloth and kind of go over it one last time to get any more. So I think for the price tag, I can just get by with my washcloth. I don't find that this is that effective, especially when I can make a sugar scrub. That being said, I know a lot of people really like this, but for me, I wouldn't re. I wouldn't repurchase it. And finally, this is from Becca. Becca is one of my favorite brands and most things that I have tried in PR from Becca were an absolute hit, but not this. So this is their Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. Now, let me take that back because it's not that it's not a hit, but I don't think this is worth the price tag and I can't justify paying this much for a high-end powder, especially one that I've used up pretty quickly. I don't have a ton left and I just don't find that this does a ton that other I, for me it's just a powder okay it's slightly more smoothing than other powders but it kind of has this pinkish tint to it so if i use it on my under eyes it darkens them up a little bit and almost gives me like a rosy tint on the skin i do think it feels very cooling and refreshing when you apply it it is 50 percent water which is really neat but i feel like i have other powders and i can find drugstore options that are a little more comparable that i wouldn't be able to justify repurchasing this one from becca and again, you're not getting a ton of product and I used it up relatively quickly. I really don't have much left. But that's gonna go ahead and complete this video. Those were five products that I would and five products that I would not repurchase that I received in PR. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Maybe I'll film more of these in the future when I have some more to talk about. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.